This is a video in Clinical Medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. In light of the threat of Ebola virus disease, it is important to emphasize proper precautions for infection control in healthcare settings. The roots of Ebola virus transmission include the red contact with an affected person's body fluids or indirect contact by working with contaminated instruments or supplies. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, is used when there is a risk of exposure to infectious material. PPE is designed to protect the skin and mucous membranes from exposure to pathogens. Healthcare workers using PPE to guard against contamination with Ebola must remember these three principles. Repetitive training and demonstrated competence in putting on and removing PPE ensures proficiency in the use of the equipment. No skin should be exposed because of the possibility of contact with blood or body fluids. To identify and immediately address any breaches in protocol, a trained observer, using a checklist to document the correct sequence, must supervise each person who is putting on and taking off PPE. This video demonstrates in a simulated environment one option of putting on and removing PPE to minimize the risk of exposure to infectious material. Protection against Ebola includes standard, contact, and droplet precautions. PPE for Ebola includes gloves, boot coverings, gowns, respirators, hoods, aprons, and full face shields. Disposable medical gloves with extended cuffs should be used. Two pairs of gloves should be worn for an additional layer of protection. Boot coverings also should be disposable, covering up to the mid-calf. Gowns should be fluid resistant or impermeable, depending on the patient and circumstances presented. These recommendations may be updated as guidance decisions change. Gowns should cover the body at least from the neck to the mid-calf. Gowns with integrated thumb hooks may help secure the sleeves over the inner gloves. Although Ebola has not been shown to be airborne, precautions should be taken in case aerosol generating procedures such as cardiopulmonary resuscitation and endotracheal intubation are performed. Disposable N95 respirators certified by the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health and previously fit tested by occupational health officials should be used along with a disposable surgical hood and full face shield that protects the head and neck. Disposable fluid resistant aprons that cover the torso down to the mid calf should also be worn for additional coverage when a patient has diarrhea or is vomiting. The demonstrations in this video show a putting on and taking off sequence for one type of PPE that has been recommended for care of patients with Ebola in United States hospitals. Healthcare settings with limited resources, such as field hospitals without running water or adequate medical supplies, may have different PPE recommendations and protocols. Prior to putting on PPE, bear in mind that you may be wearing your equipment in a potentially warm environment for an extended period of time. To minimize discomfort during patient care, you should be prepared, including using the restroom before putting on PPE. If you wear prescription glasses, make sure they are secure on your face. PPE should be put on near the patient's room, either in a clean room or in a marked area in the hallway. Clean PPE should also be stored in this area. Before entering the area where PPE is put on, change into scrubs and ensure that a trained observer is available. Change into washable shoes. Secure long hair or bangs. And ensure that all personal items, such as jewelry and pagers, have been removed. Enter the PPE donning area and visually check the integrity of your equipment. The trained observer will use a checklist to review the correct sequence of events and read aloud the process to you. Before handling any PPE, clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub. When your hands are dry, put on the first pair of gloves. Next, sit down and put on boot coverings over your washable shoes. Insert your arms through the sleeves of the gown, ensuring that the cuff of each inner glove remains under the sleeve. Overlap the gown in the back and then secure the ties. Cup the outside of the respirator in your dominant hand with a pliable nasal strip at your fingertips and the two straps hanging freely around your hand. 
bring the respirator to your face. Secure the lower strap around the back of your neck and secure the upper strap behind your head. Mold the pliable nasal strip against the bridge of your nose. Perform a seal check. Begin by covering the respirator and inhaling deeply and quickly. The respirator should slightly collapse inward. Next, place your hands around the respirator. Exhale and determine whether there are any air leaks around the mask. If the respirator fails to collapse or if air leaks from the side, remold the nasal strip and adjust the positioning of the respirator on your face. Next, place the hood over your head, ensuring that it overlaps the gown, covers your head and neck fully, and extends to the shoulders. If you are using an apron, place your head through the opening at the neck. Have the observer secure the ties in the back. Next, put on the second pair of gloves. Extend the set of gloves over the sleeves of the gown. Place the face shield over your hood, with the cushion resting on the forehead and the strap on the back of your head. Adjust the elastic strap if necessary to ensure snug fit. The trained observer must now verify the ensemble and ensure that you can move comfortably without compromising the integrity of your PPE. Disinfect your outer gloves with an alcohol-based hand rub. You are now ready to enter the patient's room. The proper removal and disposal of contaminated PPE is essential and is the most difficult challenge in preventing inadvertent exposure to pathogens requiring careful attention. PPE removal should take place in an anteroom or doffing area separate from the patient's room. This area is deemed potentially contaminated and is separate from the clean area used for putting on PPE. The following should be available in the anteroom. Clean gloves, an alcohol-based hand rub, one chair clearly identified as the dirty chair for the removal of shoe coverings, a second chair designated as the clean chair to be used for the disinfection of your washable shoes, EPA registered disinfectant wipes for healthcare use, and a leak-proof biohazardous waste container for disposable equipment. Before leaving the patient's room, first use an EPA registered disinfectant wipe to disinfect any visible contamination on your PPE. Disinfect your outer gloves with an alcohol-based hand rub and allow your gloves to dry. Ensure that a trained observer is available in the anteroom to supervise the PPE removal process using a checklist that remains in the anteroom and to watch meticulously for any breaching protocol. It is important for the trained observer to wear a fluid-resistant or impermeable gown, a full face shield, two pairs of gloves, and impermeable boot coverings. Enter the anteroom when indicated by your trained observer. Once in the anteroom, conduct another inspection of your PPE and disinfect any visible contamination with a disinfectant wipe. Disinfect your gloves. If wearing an apron, break the strap behind your back. Break the strap that is securing the apron around your neck and pull the apron away from your body rolling it inside out. Discard it in the biohazardous waste container. Inspect your PPE again for visible contamination or tears. If visual contamination remains, wipe the area again with a disinfectant wipe. Disinfect your gloves. Next, sit down on the designated dirty chair to remove your boot covers. Grasp the heel of one shoe covering and slowly pull it off your leg and foot. Be careful to avoid touching your scrubs and shoes. Dispose of the boot covering in the biohazardous waste container. Repeat for the other boot covering. Afterward, rise, step away from the dirty chair, and disinfect your outer gloves. Remove the outer gloves by grasping the glove of the other hand at the wrist. Pull from the exterior side of the glove and turn it inside out, with the contaminated exterior folded inside. Hold the removed glove in the double-gloved hand. Slide a single gloved finger under the wristband of the remaining outer glove. Gently pull off the glove so that it is now inside out, forming a bag for the two gloves, and discard. Disinfect the inner pair of gloves. Next, remove the face shield. It is particularly important to avoid contamination of the eyes and mucous membranes when removing facial PPE. Tilt your head forward and lift the shield by the strap. 
bring it above and away from your head without touching the shield itself and discard it in the biohazardous waste container. Disinfect your gloves. Leaning forward, grasp the hood near the top and carefully pull it off and away from your head. Discard it in the biohazardous waste container and disinfect your gloves. Remove your gown by first undoing the fastening at the waist. Grasp the shoulder area and peel the gown away from your body, turning the gown inside out and wrapping it into a bundle. Only the interior of the gown should remain visible. Discard, then disinfect your gloves. Remove your inner gloves as described for the outer gloves, taking precaution to avoid contaminating your bare hands. Use an alcohol-based hand rub for disinfection after taking off the gloves. Put on a new pair of gloves once your hands have dried. Next, remove the N95 respirator. Avoid contact with the respirator and touch only the straps to minimize possible contamination. Tilt your head forward, grab the strap that is around your neck and lift it over your head, allowing to hang freely. Then, bring the top strap over the head and use it to remove the respirator from your face. Discard, then disinfect your gloves. Sit down on the designated clean chair and use disinfectant wipes to clean all external surfaces of your shoes. Disinfect your gloves. Remove the last set of gloves as described previously. Disinfect your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub. The train observer should conduct a final inspection at this point to identify any contamination of your surgical scrubs. If there is contamination, an occupational safety and health coordinator should be informed immediately before you exit the PPE removal area. The observer may now be contaminated and should perform the same PPE removal procedures as the healthcare worker before leaving the anteroom. PPE is available to minimize the potential harm from exposure to pathogens such as Ebola. When PPE is worn, removed and discarded properly, it is effective in protecting both the person wearing it as well as the patients and healthcare workers with whom that person comes into contact.